Praise the Lord. Greetings to you in the name of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I am Elder Joseph Wilson. Thank you for tuning in with me on Ignite, where we can ignite your faith, your joy, and your strength. We know the Word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. It is the bread of life. It is my job to inspire you and to empower you to go forth in the Lord. Now let's go to the Word of God. Follow with me. Praise the Lord. Thank you for tuning in with me on Ignite, where we can ignite your faith, your joy, and your strength. Hope you guys are having a wonderful weekend. I am Elder Joseph Wilson. Again, thank you. Thank you for your support and your prayers. Amen. I am very excited today because we have a powerful speaker on today, Evangelist Faith Wilson. Um, but before she even comes, let's have a quick word of prayer. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we just thank you for today. We thank you for waking us up this morning. We thank you for just, uh, just giving us a purpose, God. We thank you for guiding us and leading us and protecting us from danger seen and unseen, God. Bless us, a country abroad, God. And look on your people that may be in the hospitals, God. Touch them, be their comfort, God, in the name of Jesus. You have the healing power, and we know you can make a way out of no way. For we know that all things work together for the good of them that love the Lord who are called according to his purpose, God. And we thank you and we bless you, God. Look on Ignite. Let, it, let your anointing just flow. Whoever may be tuning in, God, allow the speaker to speak with power and authority. So whoever may be listening, whoever may be tuning in, will never be the same. Life changing and soul saving. In Jesus' holy and righteous name, amen. I'm not going to take up much of the time, so I want you guys to listen and take note of what the speaker is saying today, and I'm sure it's going to ignite your joy and your strength. Evangelist Faith Wilson. Amen. Amen. God bless you. God All bless right. you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Preach so on, glad on. to be here in Jesus' name. Give an honor to God, who is the head of my life, uh, my strength, my redeemer, my mind regulator, my heavy load bearer is who God is to me. I don't know what he is to you, but God is a good, good God to me. I thank God for my son, Ella Joseph Wilson, giving me the opportunity to share with you the word of God on today. I'm talking about the sacrifice of a handmaid. What is a handmaid? A handmaid is a woman, uh, uh, kind of like in servitude, a woman who is placed in a position of sacrifice, denial, and selflessness, not selfishness, but selflessness. Uh, a handmaid is uh, like today's personal assistant and more. Back in the biblical time, a handmaid uh, sacrificed her, her life, her desires, her goals, her dreams uh, to uh, help that of the lady of the house. She bore children, she raised children, uh, and she gave of herself to bless the house. Amen. Are you a handmaiden? Do you have the spirit of a handmaiden? Are you willing to give up of yourself to bless the house, the house of God in the name of Jesus? The sacrifice came. Okay, we have different examples of a handmaid. Uh, we look back in Genesis of Sarah. She had a handmaid. Poor Hagar, uh, whose uh, job was just to do what she was told by Sarah. Sarah thought that she couldn't or wouldn't be able to bear any children because of her age. And she got tired of waiting, so she told Hagar, go in there to Abraham and, and, and give me my child. And even though Hagar was the one that concealed and carry. Uh, as women, we conceal life and we carry life to bring forth life. And then that is not the end. We raise the life that has been given to us. But the handmaid was not allowed to, to take the role of a mother, but just the servant to the blessing that she brought forth. So Hagar brought forth Ishmael, and, and she nursed him and, and was raising him and teaching him only to have it given 
to Sarah. Sarah finally gave birth, and so Sarah brought forth Isaac, and so uh, uh, Ishmael was secondary thought, and so was Hagar, and she felt like, Sarah felt like they were in the way, and so Hagar, after the sacrifice, have given, and some of you all have sacrificed in hopes of it giving you the blessing that you desire, giving you the breakthrough that you've been suffering for, giving you the heights and the depths, only for it to be sacrificed for the house. And you're thinking, well, what about me? And, and, and when is the blessing going to come from me? I have done this. I have nourished. I have given. I have brought forth. And it seems like the more I give, the more is taken away from you. Are you in the position of a handmaid. And so we can go on when we talk about uh, uh, Hannah. And Hannah prayed. She was looking at uh, 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 Penina in the house who was also Elkanah's wife. And, and even though uh, Hannah was a wife, uh, she wasn't bringing forth. And, and she said, you know, Lord, I, I want a baby. It's not just enough for me to have the favor of my husband. And I know that he loves me. And I, I know that he cares for me. But it's Penina that's the one that's bringing forth. It's Penina that's giving life. I want the feeling of life on the inside. I mean, or are you pining? Are you pining to be a blessing to the house? And it seems like the blessing that you want to be is, is far away from you. And it seems like you're watching other people give forth and you're watching other people carry it. And you're like, Lord, I won't. The blessing on the inside of me. So Sarah cried out unto the Lord, and, and she went for broke before the Lord. And, and after Eli saw that, that Sarah wasn't drunk, he said, listen, go home. God heard you, and you're going to be blessed. And, and, and so she made a vow to the Lord, and she said, Lord, if you give me this child, I'm going to give it back to you. She offered herself as a handmaid for the Lord. And, and God is looking for handmaids, and he's got plenty of ladies at the house, but he's looking for the spirit of a handmaid to take hold of his people and say, Lord, I'm willing to sacrifice so that I can bring forth. And so Hannah uh, 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 began to conceal and carry. She came home and, and, and things got happy in the house. And, and, and so she was able to bring forth it. And here comes Samuel. Here comes the blessing that she was pining and whining for. And God blessed her. How many people have been waiting for a blessing and God gives it to them and they walk away. They forget about what the promise, the vow they made to God. But Hannah remembered, and she said, God, I'm going to nurse him, and then I'm going to wean him, and then I'm going to take him to the house. She took her blessing to the house. How many of you all are willing to take it to the street, take it to your family, take it to your job, take it to your community, take it to your church, give it away to God so that it will bless the house. She took him to the house of the prophet Eli for him to be raised in the spirit, the anointing, and the power of the house. She made herself a handmaid for God. And so God is saying, are you willing to be a, a, a sacrifice? Are you willing to deny yourself? Are you willing to be a handmaid for me? For me, for me. Let's go to uh, Psalms. We're going to go to Psalms 115 and we're going to start at the 12th verse. The Lord has seen and has been mindful of us. He will bless us. He will bless the house of Israel. He will bless the house of Aaron. He will bless them that fear the Lord, both small and great. People feel like because they don't have a great title, they don't have great position because they're a handmaid. They're small in the sight of men, but God said, I'm going to bless both small and 
great. The Lord shall increase you more and more and your children. He's going to bless your inheritance. He's going to bless the fruit of your womb. He's going to bless the fruit of your loins. All that he is looking for is the spirit of a handmaid. You are blessed to the Lord, which were made in heaven and earth. The heaven, even heavens, are the Lord's, but the earth hath he given to the children of men. The dead praise not the Lord, neither any that go down into silence. But we will bless the Lord from this time forth and forevermore. Why? Because we know that God is faithful. Why? Because he has looked upon our affliction. He's looked upon our sacrifice. He's looked upon our denials. He's looked upon our shame that men had thought they had put their foot on. But God said, look, I'm going to bless you small and great because of the spirit of the handmaid. Also, we're going to go to uh, Psalms 116. It says uh, in the 16th verse, O Lord, truly I am thy servant. I am thy servant. He's had, he had to say it twice. I am who I am of you. I'm not looking for uh, uh, to be great in the sight of men. I'm looking to be great to you. And how I can be great to you is offering myself a sacrifice. Jesus did it. Why can't we? He said, I'm presenting myself a sacrifice to a world that don't love me, don't want me, but here I come because I know that they need me. A handmaid knows that they are needed in a position of service. So they do it, so they sacrifice, so they deny, and they become selfless because of their love for the house. And it said, O oh Lord, truly I am thy servant. I am thy servant and the son of thy handmaid. Thou hast loosed my bonds. When you become a, a bond woman or a bond man for the Lord, it loose your bounds that the world had on you, the fleshly desires, the fleshly mindset, the fleshly strongholds. God said, I will loose your bounds when you commit yourself to me. Do we have the spirit of a handmaid? Are we willing to be wrapped, tied, and tangled all up in God? And even though it may uh, be embarrassing to you or it may not get you the results that you want and people are not calling your name and, and you don't feel like a superstar, God said, I'm looking for somebody who's wanting to serve me, wanting to love me, wanting to be used of me. That's who I'm looking for, the spirit of a handmaid. And so we go to Psalms, the 86, we're going we're gonna to just jump around just a little bit. Uh, Psalms, the 86 number, and we're going to start around the 12th verse and says, I will praise thee, O Lord, my God, with all my heart. I will glorify thy name forever, for great is thy mercy toward me. And thou hast delivered my soul from the lowest hell. O God, the proud are risen against me and have, uh, have put assemblies together and men so after my soul and have not set thee before them but thou O Lord art God full of compassion mm -hmm. gracious long suffering plenteous in mercy and truth O turn to me and have mercy upon me and give thy strength unto thy servant he is going to strengthen your works, your deeds, your sacrifice, because it is of him. And he knows when we fully sell out. It's not like we can trick God. We can't feign uh, 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 the uh, role of a handmaid. Either are you going to serve or sit down. Either you're going to lead or you're going to follow. I want to be a follower of God as a dear child because I want God to bless me. I want God to use me. And if it's for his service, I am blessed. And so we're going to go real quick, fast, and in a hurry to uh, Isaiah, the 14th chapter. I like Isaiah. I, I, I like it. A lot of people don't like the beginnings of Isaiah because they feel like it's full of judgments, but it's just setting us in order. It is realigning us with his will and desire for our life. Isaiah, the 14th chapter and the second verse, 
and the people shall take them and bring them to their place. And the house of Israel, oh, this is a good word. And the house of Israel shall possess them in a land of the Lord for thy servants and handmaids, and they shall take them captives whose captives they were. So when serving God, when becoming a handmaid of God, the things and the people who once held you captive, God will put you in a position to take captivity captive. He will curse your curse just for serving him. He said, I've got, I, got, I got to read it again. This is Isaiah, the 14th chapter and the second verse. And the people shall take them and bring them to their place. This is a high place, a, a, a place flowing with milk and honey, a place that you desire. And the people shall bring them to their place. And the house of Israel shall, shall possess them in the land of the Lord for servants and handmaids. I want you to concentrate on this. This is for the servants and the handmaids. And they shall take them captives whose captives they were. The things that had you bound and, and held you into captivity and the enemy thought that he had had you just where he wanted you, just like he thought he had Jesus right where he wanted him when he placed him, when he thought he placed him on the cross. He, but Jesus has already said, no man take my life. I lay it down to redeem. I came here wrapped into servitude because flesh is servant to the spirit of God. That's the way he made us. And then we got bent up and crossed up in the garden and start serving sin when, when shit, excuse me, when we should have been serving the Lord. I'm going to slow down just a little bit. So he said the things that once had us bound, I'm going to bind it so that you can be free, free at last and free indeed. And so whose captives they were and they shall rule over their oppressors. Have you been oppressed by something? Some people are, are oppressed by anxiety, depression, You've lost your zeal, you lost your hope, your passion for God. You, don't, you hardly ever pick up the word anymore. You hardly praise God anymore because you feel like you're not getting paid. Because people are like, look, if I'm going to go to a job, I'm going to work so that I can get paid. But if you put your time in for God, you have job security. In this world, it's hardly ever found any more of job security. I don't care how long you've been there, they will get rid of you. The company will fold so that the lines and, and pocketbooks of the shareholders will make them richer. They do what they have to do to protect the bottom line, your job, the fact that you have bills, the fact that you have kids, that mean a thing. And so people look at church in that same way. Well, I prayed and I, did, I didn't get what I thought I was going to get. I've been serving and, I, and it looked like I got passed up for promotion in the church. I thought I was the next assistant pastor. I thought I was the next youth leader. I thought I was the next, next evangelist and it seemed like passing you back. So what is the pay that you're looking for? The Bible said if we put our time in, payday is coming. What is the payday? Life, health, strength, encouragement, power from all devils and all demons. He's given us power and authority. We've got his back. His backing. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow us. We have the strength and power of God. He said, just speak the word. But we have to speak it in faith and we have to speak it in obedience. It's not taught much anymore that we have to obey. People want the blessings, but they don't want the work. They don't want to serve. They don't want to sacrifice. But Isaiah 1 and 19 said, if you are willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. If you serve me, I will bless you. Even though Sarah disobeyed God and had Hagar, her handmaid, go into Abraham, and she brought forth uh, uh, Ishmael. Don't you know that the Arab nation is blessed because of Ishmael and Hagar? 
It is so. It's not just the Jewish nation, but it's the Arab nation too. Why? Because they both came from Abraham, and that's another uh, uh, lesson in itself. But I want you to know, I don't care when you serve or how you serve, God is going to bless you if the service is of him. Now, let's go, and I'm almost done here. I want to take you to the story of uh, Rachel and Leah. I love talking about them. There's so many messages in that story. Uh, they both had handmaids. Leah, God blessed her womb because he knew that she was hated. They didn't like her. The daddy had to trick her. Laban had to trick uh, uh, Jacob just so Leah could have a husband because she wasn't good looking. She was kind of funny looking and he didn't think that she would be able to give, get anybody. So he tricked Jacob into uh, uh, laying with Leah and he thought he was right. So Leah was never really wanted. And so God knew it, and so he blessed her womb. And, and, and after that, she just started giving birth after birth. And then finally, God remembered Rachel and, and gave Rachel Joseph, and that was the child of their love, a child of promise. But uh, when both of them quit bearing, they started offering up the handmaids. The handmaid, a handmaid, and doesn't have a choice in whether she, she serves. She's given a command, and she does it. We're looking for options, but God is saying, this is your option. If you want to be blessed, if you want to be delivered, if you want to be healed, if you want to be set free, if you want to walk in the blessings of God, your choice is do what I say do. That is your choice. Choose you this day whom you will serve. That is your choice. Are you going to uh, choose to serve God? Are you going to serve Baal? Are you going to choose right? Or are you going to do wrong? Are you going to serve? Are you going to try to serve God or lead God? Because God is not going to follow us. Our choice is to follow God. Amen. And so we have to know that our purpose, our purpose is to serve God and serve God's people, whether that we get the hurrah man whether we are exalted in this fleshly realm, God said, I will bless you even in the valley times. I'm your lily in the valley. I bless you in the mountain tops. Even though some of you look like that you've been like the children of Israel and just been walking around in the wilderness, being able to look at the promise and not being able to attain, I'm going to serve you anyway, God. Even though I'm looking at what I want and I'm not there yet, I'm going to serve you, God. I'm going to walk this thing. I'm going to serve you. And I, before I know it, I'm no longer going to be wandering. I'm going to be climbing. Amen. I'm going to be climbing. But we do this. You can't climb by just walking in the air. God said, you got to climb this mountain. And you climb it by serving him. The choice is be a handmaid for God. Serve God, love God, because God loves you. Give up yourself, what you think you have to have, you have to be, and let God be Lord, and let God be Lord over your life, and God over your life, so that he can bless you mind, body, and soul. In the mighty name of Jesus, choose life. In Jesus' name, the sacrifice of a handmaid. Choose that in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. That, what a mighty word from God. Amen. By none other than Evangelist Faith Wilson. Amen. My mother, she did such an amazing job. Be a servant. Amen. I know everybody's worried about their plans and their own hidden agenda, but if you submit to God, your plans will be established. So let's submit to God. Let's serve God with all of our heart and soul. Let's seek ye first the kingdom of God. Amen. Huh? We have to do that. And he'll supply. The word said he'll supply all of our needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. So let's submit. Let's serve God. Let's do better as saints of God. And let's love one another and let's unify and we'll be able to grow together. I hope this lesson ignited your faith. I hope this lesson ignited your joy and strength. Again, we'd like to thank Evangelist Wilson for coming in and speaking to us on today. We'll see you guys next time. Stay ignited. I love you. And above all, the king loves you. God bless you.